We're going to test GPT-4 O, GPT-4 Omni with some practical use cases. I'm not going to go through the examples that they have given. I'm going to use some practical use cases in the last couple of weeks that I wanted. And I want to see if GPT-4 O or GPT-4 Omni, it is quite confusing what to call it. GPT-4 O, whether it can give me the answers that I wanted. This is going to be slightly more technical heavy uh, in terms of the examples that we see. But if you have other examples that you want me to go through, let me know in the comment section. To start with, I'm going to start with a very simple use case. I've gone to Kaggle and uh, Kaggle has got a data set called Road Accident Data by Vehicle Type. So I'm going to just upload this data set to GPT-4O and I'm going to see if it can produce insights. So this is the Kaggle notebook. Some human has created this thing. So I'm going to just go see if GPT-4O can come anywhere closer to it. So the first thing is we need to upload it. So I'm going to just literally drag and drop here. After I drag and drop the CSV file, I'm going to say this is a Kaggle data set and I want you to create a comprehensive report with charts and also give me a summary of the key highlights. I think this is good enough for us. It is technically going to use uh, something that they call as advanced code analysis or code interpreter, advanced data analysis. So it is going to do take the data, read it inside. It's like a, it's like a sandbox environment. It's like a contained sandbox environment with Python inside it. So as you can see, it managed to read the data. It also showed the columns, which is what you could have seen the human also doing it. So the human read the data. The human showed the head and uh, you can see that uh, there is a very simple analysis total accidents by location. This is technically I think Sri Lanka. So you can see the accidents happening majorly in which location that kind of stuff. And uh, you can see that this is also doing almost similar stuff like showing the head and all those things. Started making charts a road accidents by vehicle type. The heat map above provides uh, illustrations, blah, blah, blah. Um, Anuradhapura has the highest number of accidents. You go here, you see Anuradhapura. Actually, Ampara is there. I don't know how come it missed Ampara. That's okay. Ampara has, okay. These are two different numbers, it seems. Okay. Involving lorries and motor cars. Badulla shows a significant number of accidents involving cycles and private buses. Next, it creates a bar chart. It's pretty good. When I'm comparing with the human created bar chart. I mean like which bar chart would you prefer? I mean, no offense to the human, but this is pretty good. I like the color map or theme palette, whatever you would like to call it. Key highlights, it gives me everything. And uh, you might have noticed one thing that GPT-4O is extremely fast. This is like grok level fast. And as you can see that I uploaded the data set and all these things came just just zoom. I'm going to show you the same thing demo live so that you actually see this. I'm going to go pick one other data set here and uh, let's pick the flying commercial. This is, let's see how big it is. It is not a big data set. Okay, so I have got some information, um, fatal accidents and all the information. So I'm going to just download the data set. Okay, I'm going to save it here and I'm going to create a new conversation, get the data set here. The good thing is it's not just the CSV. Even if you upload a zip file, it is going to work, which, which is like kind of fascinating. Let me do that. Let me actually show you that. I'm going to go to the folder. Okay. And inside my folder, I'm going to make it compressed file and I'm going to drag and drop that. Okay. Um, this zip contains a data set and I want you to be a data scientist and explain it thoroughly, thoroughly with all the possible insights. If you are making a rig machine learning model to predict something, show the evils as well. Cool. We uploaded it and you can see the speed in real time. It is super fast to be honest. Uh, I've seen also mixed responses online uh, and forums like it is not as good as GPT-4 for uh, turbo for coding, but uh, in terms of speed, I think this is probably the fastest model that OpenAI has gotten it out at this point. And as you can see, there is some warning about rejects. It's reading it, you've got the head and uh, it does data cleaning as well, which is quite good. Like 
I know for sure, like if you hire an intern or somebody, you have to explicitly tell them to do data cleaning before you do it. So this is pretty decent. So it does a summary statistics. That is pretty good. Okay. F fatal accidents per million commercial flights mean standard deviation, minimum, maximum. You've got the trend analysis. Uh, once again, a decent chart trend of fatal act a liner accidents per million commercial flights. And it is in fact, because I, you know, put that thought and put that point about models, you can see that it is actually building a linear regression model. There is your MAE mean absolute error, RMSC, R square, R square is okay. It's quite bad. R square. It's like 6%. R square is negative, which says the model does not fit well and performs worse than a horizontal line representing the mean value. Okay, cool. That is good. Cool. So we have successfully got a model that can do data analysis pretty well, pretty fast. So the second thing that I wanted to do, or maybe now we are probably at the third thing. The third thing that I wanted to do with this model is I wanted it to give me a code. I'm going to give a hugging face data set, some data set like this. And uh, I'm going to just tell it that I want it to give me a code for fine tuning the model. I've got like, the notebook here. Let's see. Or let's first read simply the data set. Okay. So I'm going to just go. Uh, I've got a hugging face data set. I want you to give me a code that I can run on Google Colab to read the data set and display random rows. Fine tuning, that is all like further big. So it's going to give me this thing. And yeah, I, as you can see here, it gives you a lot of information. I'm going to just stop it and then say, just give me the code. No explanation required. I just need to copy and paste it on Collab. Let's see if it works. This is one of the thing, one of the ways you actually see if it can follow instruction and you can see that it pretty much did a good job. So one, it gave me this thing, which is to run the code. I'm going to copy and paste it. Like literally I'm going to copy and paste it and run it the first time it is going to install the data set. You can see that it is connecting here. That's why it is taking time. It is going to install the library first and after it does, it's going to read it and the uh, this is not the typical pandas data frame format. This is hugging faces own data set format. So I want to see if it can actually display the result. So it says display random rows. And if you want explanation, it, it was actually giving us the explanation why we have to do certain things and it can do. So if it goes through it, then I'm going to say that give me a BERT model that I can fine tune this data set on. So I want to fine tune a BERT model. Okay. It's downloading the data set now, as you can see here, it's unfortunately I've picked up a data set that is one GB. Um, it's, it's quite a big data set. If, if some of you remember that this is one of the data sets that we used to use early in the large language model days to fine tune these models. It's an open Orca data set. And, um, yeah, so going back to, okay, it's a five GB data set. It's going to take some time. So I'm going to go ahead and then ask, okay, that's good. Uh, I want to, I want to fine tune a small LLM using this. Can you suggest me a code? Let's see. Uh, certainly to transform. Okay. It's suggesting me to use distal bird uncased. Uh, I can understand that given that I said I want a small LLM, it has made the choice to use distal bird, which is again good. Once again, it is giving me the code to install the libraries. It is giving me the data set, the model name, the pre-processing train evil training arguments. Um, surprisingly it selected to um, E minus five. Um, I, I, I thought like it might select five E minus five, uh, for uh, the uh, learning rate. It didn't use a lot of hyper parameters, like let's say dropout and, um, uh, yeah, gradient accumulation and all those things, but yeah, weight DK is there. So it's a decent enough co code to start with. So if you want to do model fine tuning, once again, I think this is like pretty good. So it gives me the entire code where I can load the data set and also fine tune the model with that. It gives me the fine tuning. Okay. Now I think this is a good enough thing. So I'm going to let it run and uh, possibly show the result later on. So the second test, it has successfully managed to give us a code for us to do something. Now, next I'm going to just ask some generic question where I wanted to browse the internet and uh, give me the result. I want to buy a smartphone. 
I live in India and I prefer dual SIM phone. I don't want to spend more than 35,000, let's say 40,000, 40,000. And I would prefer a clean Android OS. Haha, ha, I can't afford an iPhone. Suggest me five, four options with details. So this is to go beyond coding, like slightly different. And I wanted to check the internet and give me. And as you can see, once again, it is pretty fast. In fact, uh, it suggested Pixel 6a and uh, yeah, I, I actually use Pixel 7a. It doesn't give me any links. Maybe it is hallucinating. I don't, I don't see any reference links. Cool. Okay. Now it's going to add. Okay. Now it's adding reference links. And I want to actually see if it is Amazon link. So let's click the link. How do I click? Can I click this? Hello? Excuse me. Uh, unfortunately, I could not click this. That is quite strange. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any way to click. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't click it. Um, but anyways, um, it suggested me pixel 6a. Um, I own pixel 7a. What about pixel 7a? Let's see what it says. It's a great choice. If you can find it, it's 39,000. I ideally I would have expected it to give me this small phone because I wanted a clean. Okay. Some of is, is, I don't know if it is a browser thing. I could not use it, but it gives me all the information. As you can see here, uh, the phone and all the things and all the other things. So it can browse the internet for you, give you things that you want. And we're going to go through one final test before that. Oh, it successfully gave me five random things. That is quite good. So now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go pick up an article. Okay. And I'm going to give it to chat GPT and I'm going to ask it to give me back as a JSON. So which is quite important for me. So let's, uh, let's see, uh, I'm going to go pick movie reviews. Okay. And, uh, let's, let's go to the first one. Let's pick one of these. I'm going to pick all these, copy this, come back here, start a new conversation. Give me all these in a proper JSON format. That's it. I've given this and I wanted to see if it can give me a JSON. And as you can see, once again, the speed is one of the biggest things. And um, I would probably make a separate video with more coding, like in-depth coding um, demos. And it is done already. So we're going to go to the JSON formatter and uh, click. I'm going to paste it. Yeah, it's uh, validate format. It's a very well formatted JSON. So it does a pretty good job for Hindi, Kannada, and we have English. We have got Avatara Purusha to Srikanth, Pyar Ke Do Naam, Woman of My Billion, Gobru, something, something. So it does a pretty good job of giving a JSON. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the same thing. Okay. I'm going to just give the same thing in a new chat. And I'm going to say, this is a JSON, add a new field to each of the nodes, and then include the value if the critic rating is low, high, medium. So all I wanted to do is I wanted to add a new field here and then tell me if it is low, high, medium. So technically what I'm expecting four means high 2.5 means low, probably something like that. And uh, here we go. It did a good job. Now we're going to copy this again, go back to a JSON formatter, paste it, validate it, format it. Cool. It works high, medium. There is no low. Okay. So I think, Oh, it is low. So I think it considers anything below average low. And, um, let's, let's ask what, okay. It said, okay, for a, a high 3.5 on above 2.5 on three low 2.5 below. Perfect. So that brings us to the end of this video. And, uh, I know this is not a very comprehensive test, but this seems to be a good model. I, I've heard from a lot of people that at this point, it is not a really good 
as good as GPT-4 Turbo in terms of reasoning. But I think this speed, the speed in which it is writing something like um, write a joke on Sam Altman and Elon Musk fishing in Mars. So I think this is like the speed at which this is particularly happening. I think this is going to unlock a lot of business value. And I want to create more content for people to create applications and uh, tools on top of chat GPT for GPT for all these large language models. So let me know if you have any questions in another video. Happy prompting.